Hello and welcome back to this week's episode of Under the Book Cover. I'm Anna, an academic outreach librarian here at South Texas College. I am here with the lovely Elizabeth and I will introduce her a little bit later on. But first I want to say what is going on at the campuses. At our STAR campus, we have a total of six study rooms. Three of those study rooms have technology in them. The technology includes a computer and a big display monitor. Now they are adding technology to two more of their study rooms. So they will have five study rooms that have technology in total. So if you're over there and you need to use any of our equipment, you can reserve a study room by going to our website, library.southtexascollege.edu and stop on by. It is only one person per study room in all of our campuses because we are trying to follow the social distancing rules and guidelines, so please be aware of that. You can reserve a study room three days in advance and use them for three hours for that day. If you do schedule a study room, please be aware that you need to be there within 15 minutes of your scheduled reservations. So for example, if you reserve a room at 9 a.m. and you show up at 9.30, your reservation will be canceled just in case other people need to use it. Um, so you must show up before or by 9.15 a.m. Now that I'm thinking about it, I should have used 3 p.m. for the example because there were so many threes. I messed it up. <laughs> uh, next is at our Regional Center for Public Safety Excellence campus, which is Rickipsie campus for short. Let me share my screen and do it properly this time. <laughs> Can you see it, Elizabeth? Awesome. So this is their Fire Academy display for this month. Um, it's for the Fire Academy. They have textbooks that you're able to go in and check out and there's also this paper. This is the paper that's right here and it shows you which ebooks that they have available, which hard copies they have available, some curriculum manuals that are PDF or printed copies um, that they have there at the campus. So if you are interested and you need help, they have got those ready for you. Also, they just received two TCOLE test prep books that are in their reserves. So it is on a first come first serve basis and you can check it out for two hours, but it must be in the library. You cannot take our reserve books out of the library. So just to let you know. Next, I'm going to be introducing Elizabeth Hollenbeck. Welcome Elizabeth. Would you mind Hello. telling us a little bit about yourself? <laughs> Hi everyone, I am Elizabeth Hollenbeck. I am the Outreach and Instruction Librarian here at STC Library. Um, I love working here. I have amazing colleagues and uh, we've been going through a lot of changes, but it keeps life exciting and so um, I'm just really happy with how things are going so far and hope you guys are having a great semester. I hope so too. I never say that. I should start saying that. <laughs> 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 um, well, first, I would like to talk to you about an amazing resource that we offer, which is our library instruction. Can you explain what library instruction is? Yes, absolutely. So library instruction services are teaching users, which are our students, a set of skills tailored to help meet their information needs, including search techniques, choosing appropriate resources, and using information effectively. So our team, our instruction team is made up of librarians of, of um, across our entire district. And so we partner with faculty and um, come in and help supplement what they're teaching in their classes about information and resources and citations and things like that. And so um, we're just able to make sure that students are very comfortable using library resources, how to access our databases, um, our different research guides. We've got a lot of great information out there. So our sessions are fully customized and cover topics in any subject that's taught at STC. 
and we tailor our presentations to address the common struggles that students have with the research process and finding information for their assignments. So no matter what the subject matter or the type of essay or report that's been assigned in the class, uh, we can show them how to get to the resources that make sense. Some classes may need primary source documents. Other classes may only want peer-reviewed online uh, journals. Um, other classes may need um, books and other materials, um, visual arts, uh, books about artists and things like that. So from subject to subject, we have the resources that students need. And so through our instruction services, we then teach them how to find them and how to get to them and to know which one to pick. We're also able to present on information literacy concepts such as evaluating resource credibility and things like information bias, how to avoid plagiarism. You know, that's a very complex topic and a lot of students get hung up on, you know, well, I didn't really know how to paraphrase that, so I didn't mean to plagiarize, you know, doesn't, don't I get a pass? Well, um, actually, no. So uh, we have some ways of talking about plagiarism and helping to break down some of those bigger concepts um, to help students understand, you know, their academic responsibility, things of that nature. So thinking about, you know, we need information all the time, right? We use information every day. And, you know, like, like many adults, you know, our students are also um, very comfortable with Google and, you know, looking up any kind of information. So if you need to know where a restaurant is, or you want to check who was in a movie or, you know, anything like that, anything that comes up, um, why is my cat doing that? Or, <laughs> you know, trying to when, find this song you know, with lyrics. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. Um, um, so there's lots of reasons, you know, to, we're, we're accessing information all the time, information's everywhere. And so, um, you know, how, what may be natural is to go to Google and look for information about historical um, figures or different time periods in history, things like that. And so, you know, you may find a lot of information, but how do you know if it's really going to be okay to use in your research paper? Um, there can be great information accessible through Google um, that's just freely out there that's, you know, credible and reliable and that you can trust, but it's really hard to figure out which of those resources you find fit that. And so what's great is that the library's already done all of that work. So we know <laughs> we've already checked. We've gone back and, you know, we, we subscribe to databases where there's lots of checks and balances in place to make sure that the article the authors, you know, these, this is reliable information. This is the truth. You know, if you want to know um, something about, you know, jellyfish migration, <laughs> then, you know, only experts in the field, their information is going to be the cutting edge, top notch, peer reviewed information. And so we'll help you get right to that information so that you really, you know, you can learn. And you can acquire that knowledge that you need for your classes. So um, we have some great activities that we go through in the class that help students really think about that. You know, when is it appropriate to use Google? When should you come to the library? And, you know, that can differ to some extent from subject to subject. But with library instruction services, we just, you know, share all of that with students and help them get on the right track. So um, so you can pick the right information at the right time, depending on the need. That's an amazing service. Um, it is. And is it possible to do multiple instruction sessions or is it only one session and that's it? Absolutely. Um, it depends on what works best for the faculty member. Um, there may be just one or two things that students are struggling with. And so we can come in and, you know, just do the one presentation about those topics. You know, maybe it's just about how to, you know, so you make a search in a database, but you want to make sure that your results are only from the last five years. You know, um, you want the most current research. So how do you narrow that down by date and, you know, some different tools that are available that way. So we can present on a specific topic like that, which may take 20 to 30 minutes, you know, or a few other things. If it's a class of brand new students, you know, they may need to know more of an overview. And then later in the semester, when their first research assignment is coming up, 
um, they may need to know a little bit more and get some hands-on practice with that so we can come back and do another session or we can plan okay first we're going to talk about this topic and then we're going to talk about this and then at the you know end of the semester we'll make sure that everyone's references are up to par and you know the students know how to format their citations and those things that you know are not necessarily what we do in daily life but are so critical you know in the academic environment so, so professors can just come in and say i only need a 10 minute instruction and we can say mm -hmm. yeah that's fine or if they were saying like i need sure. instructions every monday for just the month of may can you do that we can, yes. Everything we offer is fully customized to the needs of the class and the faculty member. So, um, you know, we can do those short snippets. We can um, we can record something in advance. You know, if it's a if it's a short topic, just to demonstrate one or two things, we can provide a recording in advance. Um, the best learning happens when we get a chance to be in the class, like with the class, and fill, you know, ask questions and have them, you know, give us examples to work with, and we can connect everything to the assignments in the class. Um, but we recognize, you know, in a virtual world, not everybody's going to be able to attend a session at a specific date and time. So those sessions can also be recorded by the faculty member in Blackboard or Zoom or, you know, whichever platform they're using. And then it can be made available to those students. So um, even students that have seen the presentation and been part of it may want to go back and review something, you know, maybe, um, you know, there, there can be when you're dealing with information, you can get overloaded really quickly, right? <laughs> and so, yes. you know, even um, even when you're an expert, you know, sometimes by the end, you're just like, oh my God. <laughs> So, information <laughs> overload. <laughs> right. Yeah. So sometimes, you know, so there's a benefit to having that, you know, synchronous opportunity to, um, you know, talk with the, the librarian that's presenting and, you know, bounce ideas around, but then later to be able to go back and look at the recording. So um, our instruction services have been online for a while. Now we're seeing such an increased demand. So it's been great. We've been able to connect with a lot of different faculty in different disciplines and um, you know customize what we're offering depending on you know their time constraints or um, how many assignments they have in the semester um, whether it's you know students that are in their first couple of classes at STC who might need a little more background information who might benefit from having a second presentation later in the semester kind of to refresh and then build on those concepts so that they're you know by the end of the class then they're just fully versed on how to filter their search results and you know how to find the research guide um, our research guides are amazing resources we have one for every subject that's taught at the college so whether you're studying HVAC or chemistry or organizational leadership or fine arts um, there's a research guide there that pulls all of the library resources for that subject into one place so you know we can share with students about that and um, it's it's just and it's fun. <laughs> I think, you know, our instruction team is very enthusiastic. Um, you know, we are well versed on everything the library has. And so, you know, we just kind of take, you know, the faculty member and their need and then our resources and connect those together. And it's just a great experience for students. And we find, you know, in our field, we find that over time, students that have had the benefit of library instruction often do a lot better on their assignments. They do better in their classes overall with higher GPA and, and so forth. You know, there's a lot of different factors that can affect student success, but we know that the library can play a big role in that too. So who and how can someone request library instruction? So absolutely, anyone, um, can, you can contact your, your campus librarian, you can contact your library liaison, you can contact me. I welcome you to contact me about any of your instruction services needs. Um, we also have a form that you can fill out on our website that just asks some information about what you need in your class. And so I'm gonna show you how to get to that um, right here. Let me go ahead and share my screen. Okay, are you seeing my screen now? Yes. Great. Okay, so um, this is our library homepage, which is library.southtexascollege.edu. And at the 
bottom of the page here under information, we have an area for faculty support. So there's a couple different things that I'll show you all today. Um, under library instruction services here, this gives you a little bit of background about what our services are um, that we can provide, you know, focus lessons or in-depth training, multiple sessions, you know, etc. What we've discussed already today in this episode. And then here's our library instruction request form. I'll go ahead and click on that so you can see. It collects some instructor information, the format. Right now we're not offering on-campus instruction because there's just no way to follow social distancing practices and most of our classes are offered online. So what's awesome is that we already have the technology and the experience and the enthusiasm for teaching online. So um, we've got you covered with, with uh, our online services. And so here's where a faculty member would request, you know, what topics would you like covered? And so, you know, again, this could be some basic things like, you know, our, just our basic overview of library services. This could be focused on a specific database, you know, maybe um, Films on Demand is one database that we get um, a lot of questions about and that a lot of instructors use in their classes to supplement the content. So um, being able to show students what they can do in Films on Demand where they can save a video playlist of different um, videos that, that they're researching, how to find the citation information there. Anyway, there's a lot of different things that we can do. You can put the session date and time, how many students you have, and um, this also, this form allows faculty to upload the assignment that their students have been given. So that way we can connect, you know, the best databases, the research guide, um, you know, any information that will help their students with that particular assignment. Um, that can be extremely beneficial for students who might feel overwhelmed. Um, maybe it's their first research paper and so they don't really know where to start. So the library can help out with that any special instructions and then you just submit the form and then it'll go to um, the correct campus and then we follow up with the faculty member to confirm the details from there. So, so if um, the faculty member forgets to put a topic and they're like, oh my gosh, I already submitted the form, should they just wait for somebody to contact them or what should they do? Yeah, um, they'll receive a confirmation email and so they can either, um, you know, and it has contact information on, on, the, on that confirmation email. <laughs> so they can follow up there, um, they can reach out to me directly, um, they can use our, our chat service to connect with a librarian and, you know, get that updated. Um, there's, it, they won't get lost. Um, we usually <laughs> follow up right away. Um, we get an alert as soon as um, a, a form has been submitted. And so um, you faculty members should feel confident that we'll reach back out and make sure that we have all the details necessary. Um, and that's true even if they do fill out the form completely. And we always follow up to make sure that we understand exactly what's going on in the class so that we're on the same page and can make sure that what we're sharing with students is really what the, the faculty member wants. That's good to know. <laughs> yes. Um, another resource for faculty is um, every department, every discipline in the college has a library liaison. and. Um, so you can also, uh, depending on your discipline, you can reach out to your specific library liaison. For example, here in bachelor programs, um, I'm the library liaison for organizational leadership. So, you know, I'm connected with that department. And so any faculty in that department can reach out to me as their liaison to schedule an instruction session. Um, I may not always be the teacher for that, but I can make sure that they're taken care of and I'm a good resource for them. So, um, and then, you know, every subject, you know, has a go-to person. And so that's another very valuable resource. So our library liaisons can help out with instruction. Um, they can also help out with um, finding or making sure our library collection matches what's being taught in the class. So if there's different, you know, theories or authors or books, you know, that are relevant in the field that are being used in the classroom, then our liaison can help make sure that we also have those in our library collection and make sure they're available for students. So that's good to know. Yes, yeah, it's pretty neat. We want to make sure that faculty and students always feel like they're being taken care of. So um, we want to connect um, 
consistently from semester to semester with all the different departments and with new faculty that are coming on board and faculty that we have strong relationships with and just make sure that you know we're meeting their needs we're meeting their student needs and we have a variety of services that maybe they're not familiar with or haven't taken advantage of before so hopefully um, hopefully I've shared some tidbits today that you know inspire um, to to build those relationships even stronger. I hope so. It's a great resource and we're here to help. So we can't wait to hear from y'all. Hint, hint. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for that information, Elizabeth. Absolutely. Yes. And um, feel free, anyone who sees this episode, feel free to reach out to me at any time with any questions that you have. I'm always glad to help. Nice. And you were able to find it when she showed and shared her screen. So just in case to go back through that way. Yes. <laughs> um, next is our holiday break. All campuses will be closed Thursday, November 26th through Sunday, November 29th. So do you have any exciting plans for the break? Well, yes. So my family is kind of spread out all over the country. So I'm excited to have some different Zoom calls and um, phone calls and, you know, connect with family. Um, it's also National Novel Writing Month this month. <laughs> so um, I've been participating in that, but I'm a little bit behind in my word count. So I'm hoping to do some writing and um, get caught up with uh, with the, the manuscript I'm working on. So I, I do create a writing in my free time and do you yeah. participate like somewhere in particular like you have to turn in information or this is just for you the national novel writing month is a um it's a program that's been around for decades and it the challenge is to write um 50,000 words um in a month in 30 days and so you can set daily word count goals or weekly goals or things like that it's about 1700 words a day when you break that down but um and it this is just like getting words on the page there don't have to be perfect it can just be notes to yourself. It can, <laughs> you, know, um, you know, hmm, I'm not sure what happens here, but I know what happens next. And then you just go on with whatever happens next in your story. Um, so it's the, the idea is that if you challenge yourself in this 30 day period, then by the end, you have a 50,000 word manuscript, which most novels are about 60 to 90,000 words. So, you know, you've got something to work with. And and so that kind of eliminates the barrier of your thinking of, oh, how can I ever write a book? You know, so you just kind of, right. you know, once you have something to work with, editing and organizing and beefing up different sections or cutting sections, you know, that that part's a lot easy. But the first thing you need is the manuscript itself. So so this is a national challenge. So you can um, it's all virtual right now, of course, um, but you can. Um, for, and it's free. So you can just sign up and um, plug into different regions. So like I'm part of the Texas region and the RGV region. And so um, you can uh, connect through their website and encourage each other and see how people are doing. And, um, you know, so they have up. forums. They do have forums and things. Yes. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it's pretty fun. So I, I try to do this every year. Um, not as far as I want to be this this year, but that's okay because even just trying a little bit, you get further ahead than if you don't try at all. So that's really yeah. cool. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, it's <Wow>. fun. So, <laughs> so yeah. Nice. So yeah. So I'm looking forward to the break. I want to reconnect with my family and um, also do some more creative writing where. Um, I can just, you know, kind of focus on my story and see what happens with my characters and what, what shenanigans they get into. <laughs> That's cool. Um, what about you, Anna? Well, I, I'm going to be with family, but I'm going to see if I can actually get a little gameplay in. <laughs> nice, nice. I uh, need to play a little World of Warcraft. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh -huh. those things we deny ourselves all, you know, during the work week, during the semester. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Indulge a little bit, right? Exactly. You know, I gotta, I gotta get my game plan. <laughs> yes. But, um, well, thank you so much, Elizabeth, for joining me. I hope everybody was me. able to, 
get all the information that they need and we can get more library instructions going on. <laughs> Sounds great. Thank you, Anna. Hope You're everybody's welcome. doing great. <laughs> yes, it's almost almost break time, so <laughs> hang in there. Hang in there. <laughs> Well, I hope you'll join us for our next episode of Under the Book Cover. Thank you so much. Thanks again, Elizabeth. <laughs> You're welcome. Bye, everyone. <laughs> Bye.